Well, Callum Smith, good to see you here in Dublin. Massive fight day ahead for Katie Taylor, Chantal Cameron. But seven weeks today, yeah. your big fight against Arta Baturbiev. How's preparations been going this time around? Yeah, good. Um, obviously, with the postponement, I had a bit of time off to have basically got a full camp. So I had time off to rest, come back down to, to go back up again. But it's been good since we started up again. I oh, buddy over in England and... I've always said when I'm in the gym, I feel like I improve all the time and we're just getting little tactical things in place now and keep working on them week after week. And I'll come fight night, I'll be ready to go over there and take his belt off. Just today in itself, being in a fight hotel, you can yeah. probably hear the lift going off behind us. Yeah. You're bumping into fighters who are boxing tonight. Does that just give you a little bit of a, an extra itch? Yeah, I think it always has. I think when you're around boxers, even like just being in the gym with like, say the likes of Gary Cully and stuff who's on tonight, you, you're seeing them preparing for the fight and the tactical side of it's always been something that I've I've enjoyed and it does make you want to want to do it yourself and I want to start a camp you kind of I know the date I'm fighting and I know the, the the stuff I have to go through to get there whether that's the physical side getting fit or the tactical side and making sure I improve as a fighter so I've always in, enjoyed that side but as tough as it might be and I say being at the fight night now and seeing all this just give you that little little bit of buzz to to get yours on but you know, it's seven weeks a day but I'm sure it'll feel like a couple of weeks time I'll be I'll be heading into my own fight week. When you're in camp, the weeks the weeks go by pretty quick. And oh, you, the old saying, you've got to make every day count. And no, I'm doing my best to do that. You say it goes quick sometimes in fight weeks, yeah. but this time's the second time around. You yeah. had a full camp, like you say. Yeah. Um, just talk to us about the frustration. It must, must have been very disappointing for yourself. Yeah, it was because I know everyone says it, but I'd had a really, really good camp, to be honest with you. It was very tough physically, but I felt I was in really, really good shape. I'd, I'd started, that would be main actual block of sparring and it was coming to the end of it. And, I've been sparring pretty well as well, so it, it's one of them. It was very, very frustrating, but I pulled out of a fight myself earlier in the year. I was supposed to fight Steppy in Liverpool, so I do understand. It's part of boxing. Yeah, injuries do happen. I'm not. It's not the first person to happen. It's not good. No, I'm not going to be the last. It, it, it does happen, and it's part of the sport. You've got to just take it on the chin. But yeah, it was. It was frustrating. It was a bit deflating as well. Like I said, I put a lot into the camp to just then have nothing at the end of it. But I had a good, good few weeks off, rested, spent some time with my family, and. It gave me that itch and that buzz to, to get back in camp and go again. And in terms of better bev, I think the minute I beat Border League to become man of three, I've kind of had better bev on my mind ever since. And it feels like I've been thinking about him for nearly two years now. And I just want to see him late again the ring with him and know to fight. A fight that I respect, I rate as achievements speak for themselves. But you know, I've always watched them and felt I've got the style to beat them. And I like my chances in this fight. And as it's getting closer, again, the more and more. I'm performing in the gym, I definitely you know very, very confident I can go over there and take his belt off him. How does having a second training camp for the same fighter back to back help, if at all? Yeah, I think it just gives you a longer time to prepare, but it you no know, it works both ways. He's having two camps to, to prepare for me as well. So I think if there's anything I wasn't quite getting first time round, I think I'd get get right this time. But no, it again tactically pretty similar. No spar him. I'll I think I'll probably try and mix it up a little bit rather than go through the same sparring partners over and over again. But yeah, just to keep it fresh. Yeah, just to freshen it up a little bit. But it's it's one of them, uh, uh, you know, you've got to get the right sparring in, which I feel, I feel we will. So it's, it's good. But I think it's just mentally a little bit, a little bit tougher. Like I say I've had better bit on the brain for for a long time now. But it's one of them. It's it's I'm more focused on what what I get when I win, and that's the three world titles. So regardless of who I had to beat, I was willing. I'm willing to do it. So it's. Again, I'm I'm fully focused on Arthur Better Bevan. I'm not a big, big studier, but I've seen enough of him over the years to know what, what needs to be done. And I say, Buddy, know, Buddy knows he watched them. And I believe he'll come with a good game plan this time around and we'll get it done. Your last couple of fights, we've seen you go out to the States. Just talk to us about your sort of training camp set up for this seven weeks out from fight night. Yeah, normally I say I do the first half in in the States and then back over to the, to the UK for the second half. But I, I, Buddy had phoned me, we had a little phone call and, just talking about the specifics of a camp this time round, and Buddy said, would you prefer if I come to Liverpool for the full camp this time, save your travelling? Obviously, I've got two young children as well, so as much as I enjoy going to America, it can be a little bit inconvenient at times. And I said, well, you're the boss, whatever you think's best. And he said, well, I think we'll do the full camp in Liverpool, which you knows obviously, I think my missus was a little bit happy with that decision. But yeah, he come over a little bit earlier this time. He's doing the full, say, 10 weeks or so in Liverpool. So, no, I think that just shows the the belief and commitment. He's got yeah. commitment he's got in me as well. He's leaving his family for, for 10 weeks as well. So it's, you know, it's a, you know what's at stake. It's a big fight for both of us. And I'm saying we're doing everything we can in camp to make sure the best version of me turns up. And I've always been a big believer the best version of me beats anyone in the world. And I still stand by that.
let's talk about Buddy, your relationship with Buddy inside the ring. How do you think you've developed as a fighter since you linked up with him? A lot, to be honest with you. And I was laughing the other week. I watched one of my older fights. and Which one? Um, it was on the, the, the Groves fight come up and like the highlights and stuff. And I watched it and had, I believe I boxed well against George Groves. It was, it was a good win at the time. But even watching that to one of them. Because I think when you're in the gym every day, you probably don't really notice the changes you're doing. Not any drastic change, but I watched it and I, I, I've seen a lot of changes I've made even since then. And I was a very probably stiff and upright European style and I didn't realise how upright I was until, until I watched one back. So uh, yeah, I feel I've improved a lot, buddy. I think that's what impresses me, his boxing brain, his box, he's, a, he's a perfectionist. He, a lot of the time I throw a combination that I think was good and he'll correct it slightly and then it's only when I get it right I realise why he corrected me and stuff. And I think that that's a good thing to have. I feel like I've always got to impress him every time I'm in the gym and prove he were to improve that I am I am a good fighter and I think that always brings out a little bit more of me. It takes that complacency side away and the show outside the gym, we've got a good relationship as well. I get on with him. I enjoy his company and well, I like to think vice versa. So I think we've got a good balance and I think since moving to him I start enjoying boxing again a little bit more and I say it's given me that little bit of a buzz going to the gym to, to prove prove myself to him and impress him. Heading over straight into the Lions Den, Canada, you travelled and boxed away before. But this time around, Arta Batiliev, he's adopted homeland. Yeah. Do you think you need a knockout to take the belts home? Um, I, I don't know, you get asked this question a lot as a fighter, and I think as a fighter you believe, no, if I, if I do enough to win the fight, I should get it on the decision. I'm very confident to do that, but I think the type of fighter is, I don't think it will go go the full distance. Obviously, he's never been to points, and no, I'm, I, I like, no, I fully believe in my own power, especially at 175 as well, so I think it could be a, an exciting fight to watch for, for a neutral, but I don't think it goes the full 12 rounds. No, I think I win, and I think if I win, I think I knock him out. Yeah, like you say, 19 have tried, 19 have failed, yeah. all inside the distance. However, he has been dropped twice. Yeah. Jeff Page Jr. and Callum, uh, Callum Johnson, yeah. say Callum Smith then, but we'll leave yeah. that for, for January. Yeah, um, I, I mean, that must give you confidence in itself, knowing he can be hurt. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, I've always said I rate him as a fighter. I know, say 19 fights, 19, no hopes and three world titles. I can't really criticise him much, but... I think people just forget. He, Didn't they overlook it? Yeah, yeah, I think if I had been dropped twice as a professional, I'd probably, like Andy Ward got dropped early on in his career and had to be labelled, you no, know, yeah. Ginny for, the, for his whole career. And I think better is being dropped twice and people kind of just blank it out yeah. and say he's this, you no, know, Eastern European monster and he's been put over twice and I think it was within 13 fights or something. I think if that was anyone else, they'd probably get highlighted a little bit more, but people choose to forget about it. And I think as a fighter, once you've seen it done before, it gives me even more confidence that I can do it myself. And say, you, as a fight, you take every little bit of confidence you can. And I've seen them here before, so if they can do it, I can certainly do it. And say, I head into this fight full belief that I know I can hit him. I know I can hit him, and I believe I can stop him. Did you spar CJ in the build-up to that fight in October 2018? Yeah, because yeah, I think it was the... I might be wrong, but I'm sure it was the week after Mike Rose fight. We were both in camp together, both sparred a, a lot. For like the first half of the camp, we were sparring, and then as they got closer, we kind of tailored off and used different. But I sparred Callum for many, many years. But yeah, I sparred him for the Batavia fight as well. So you said you've had Batavia on the brain for two years, but maybe sort of planted seeds even before that. Yeah, in yeah around I think, I, I, think I always knew. I think everyone kind of knew I'd be at 175 yeah. at some point. I just wasn't sure quite when, whether I thought he'd still be around. I, I, I didn't know, but I always envisioned I'd be, be a two, two division world champion, and I believe say January 13th, I, I can do that and no, it's a, I'd say familiar face, I knew, knew a better bit for, for a long time, I remember see, I was on a camp in Russia with him in the amateur, so I knew who he was and I followed his career since, so it's not, it's not heading into the unknown, it's someone I know, I know pretty well and so I know the, the task I have, but it's a one that I'm confident I can do. In that training camp, did you spar Arthur at all? No, really enough. I was 69 kilos, he was 91. So there was bit a, a difference. bit of a big difference at the time. He was he was doing heavy, well, definitely cruiserweight at the time. And I was a, a, a very tall welterweight at the time. And obviously, the way things have worked out, we're about to meet at probably light heavy. But um, yeah, I knew of him then. He was heavy. He was probably more heavy handed then. He was younger and fighting at a heavier weight. But no, I can't sit and criticize him. He's a very, very good fighter. His achievements speak for themselves. But I think there's the time and right for me to, well, for anyone to go there and beat him, and I think I'll be the man to do it. There is a photo been cir circulating in recent weeks of Arta and Dimitri Bivol out in Saudi Arabia, yeah. which has got the attention of the boxing fans. Probably a bit unfair for, for people to be suggesting that them two should get it on when you're standing in the way. Yeah, I agree. And look, if before they've taken me out the picture, if you announced that fight was getting made as a boxing fan, it's a fight I'd like to see. I, I understand people wanting to see the fight 
obviously I do think it's a bit disrespectful people saying let's see it next when you know I'm I'm next in line and I'm fight I've got a or a fight schedule with him but in terms of wanting to see the fight like who wouldn't want to see that fight at the minute they're the best two lights ever in the world Jan 14 I think that'll change but at the minute I can understand why people do want to see it but I'm I'm out here to ruin them plans and hopefully we can see me VB Vol next year as well and the three belts that are on the line are the three belts you haven't won yeah. you've obviously captured the WBA belts yeah. the other three are on offer here does that just add another little yeah definitely I always joke with me sticking to distant coach Johnny Redlands you know, if I had any formal OCD, then this kind of solves that. The, the, I've got the WBA, they've got the ring magazine, the three that I need, the exact three that, that's up for grabs. So maybe if, maybe it's meant to be, maybe it's written in the stars, but no, regardless, I want to be a, a 2 8 wheel champion, whatever belt, it just seems that little bit better that I get three this time and it's the three that I need to, to complete the set. And should you get those three, like we know and hope you will, Yeah, is an undisputed fight something you'd want to consider with Bivol? Yeah, definitely. I think that that's the... I'd either probably retire. That's the end goal. We're a champion in all the belts, or it's probably the most obvious fight to make. If one man's got three belts and someone's got the missing piece, then I think that's probably the only fight that would make sense for either of us, unless you know, we went and pursued the, the Canelo rematch, which is obviously an option for him. But whether that happens, I'm, I'm not too sure. But yeah, if it'll come past better, if then the obvious fight would be to be Volaf and hopefully take two Russians out in the space of a few months and then sail off into the sunset. And that would avenge the amateur defeat as well. Yeah, yeah. Me and it was 2011 or 2012 in Hungary. I think, I think Joshua boxed uh, Kuzman at the same time as well. Yeah, so Kuzman. So, yeah, it's a good tournament. And again, he's someone I've always had an eye on. Yeah, like I always and recognised his face. I've seen him train in the wild card. I think he kind of based off of the team when he like sat with match room and stuff. But I knew of him since since the amateurs. He's always been a you no know, very good technical fighter, good good ability and stuff. And I, I wasn't surprised when he when he went on to do what he done. You're speaking there about, you know, sailing off into the sunset. Yeah. You're 33, pushing 34 yeah. next year. Yeah. Um, your brothers, are, you know, two of them are obviously now retired. Yeah. Uh, have you started to to think this is, you know, a realistic thing now, you know? Um, you seem content. Yeah, no, no, but I've always just been happy in, in my own life. And I know I love boxing. I've done boxing my whole life. It's all I've ever known. But I'm, I think for that reason, I've been around boxing. I've seen too many fighters staying that little bit too long for for whatever reasons. And... I've always been a believer that I'm good enough to achieve what I want, and if I can do that and earn enough terms. money, then I can leave. You know, I have a big admiration for you, like Sarah Rewards and people like that who walk away when you think, oh, you probably could have had a few more fights left in you, but what's the point if you're happy and content with what you've achieved? Then, oh, it's a very, very tough sport, and you you, you do sacrifice a lot. You know, I sound like a broken record, but fighters we do, we do miss out on a lot, we do sacrifice a lot. It's, to reach the very, very top mm. of the pinnacle of the sport, it, it, it's tough to get there. So the people who keep going and keep going, it, they've obviously got their own their own reasons for doing that. But I've always felt if I can achieve what I want and walk away and be happy and content and not always sit and wonder what if, what if I could have done this, could have done that, then no, I'll, I'll leave when, whenever I feel the right time, whether that's after a bit better, if fingers crossed, then no, that may be it. If I, if I feel like there's more left in I want to carry on then, just as long as it's always on, my terms and I'm not fighting for or for other reasons certainly one or two been more, been more nights before then but Cam yeah. Smith we look forward yeah. to heading over to Canada in January and seeing you do your thing mate best yeah. of luck Thank you very much. and uh, we'll speak soon